One of the one of the things we can do as parents, and and we've used this phrase before, more is caught than taught, mm-hmm. is is we can be growing in our faith, mm-hmm. and we can even be you know processing of like, hey, here's something that God's teaching me. Here's something that I'm learning right now. Hey, I read this today in my Bible, um, and and if we want our kids to engage with the Bible, then we should engage with the Bible and go, yeah. here's something that I'm learning, or hey, we talked about this in church, and this is something that that God's speaking to me, and have have conversations about our faith journey with our kids. Yep. Uh, I grew up in a home where we went to church, but I, I never really heard about the faith journey of my parents. Like, yeah. what is actually, what is God doing in your life? Like mm-hmm. that, that's good information for a kid to hear from a parent. Um, modeling things like prayer, like praying yeah. on a regular basis yeah. um, and not just praying the exact same prayer repeated, but what's actually on your heart. And when kids are wrestling with something, go, let's talk to God about it yeah. and, and make that part of the pattern. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how, in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Sitting down once again with Mr. Michael Branton. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Mike, if you don't know, is in charge of all of our student ministries at Sun Valley, and you've been working here for years. Uh, Actually worked here, went and worked with an organization working with youth, and then came back and worked here again because you had so much fun the first time around. It's an amazing place. Yep. (laughs) So glad you're here. We've been talking about the next generation and and Gen Z. Mike, give us some stats because I know there's been a ton of studies. People are very curious about this generation. Yeah. Uh, both in the secular world, businesses are going, hey, what makes Gen Z tick? And um, mm-hmm. also if you're a business owner or whatever, you're going, okay, this is a workforce that now is entering in. And so how do I engage and, and how do we how do we work together? So talk to us about Gen Z. What are some things that, that we could learn from all this research that's been done? Yeah. They're actually the biggest generation mm-hmm. living at the t- at this moment. Okay, uh, so they have you know a lot of power mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to spending money or influence or uh, how things are advertised. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know all of that, um, and they've actually been dubbed the open generation. Okay, yeah. explain that. What does that mean? Um, they are open to a lot of things, mm-hmm. uh, but not necessarily grounded in uh, in truth and or grounded in facts. Yeah. So so imagine back with me a time before the internet, <laughs> if you if you can, where Gen Z doesn't know that. Yeah. Where it was like, <laughs> oh, I wonder, I wonder if this is true. Like, and you didn't have the answer in your pocket. Like you couldn't just pull it up and do a quick search. Um, there there's so much information. Yeah. And and they have been bombarded with it. And it's not always I mean sometimes it's like a Wikipedia thing. That sure. somebody else wrote, and they're going, it's sure. true, because it's on Wikipedia. Like, my well, kids do this all the time, and, and they'll debate AI, things. Yeah. AI, you know, sources from Wikipedia. Yeah, and so it's like, oh, okay, well, let's let's do a little research on that. Uh, but they're quick to go, okay, that's true, mm-hmm. because there's an article on it, because yeah. somebody wrote a blog. And uh, and so it, there's so much information, but it's not all good information. Right. And, and so, okay, so that's they're open, though. Yeah, they're absolutely open. Which that's probably part of that conditioning of their life of just constant influx of, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. let's learn. And at the pace that things have changed in their time frame of being alive, yeah. uh, they kind of have to be. Right? Yeah. Like like Pluto's not a planet anymore, and then it is, and then it's not. <laughs> yep, <and> yep. Then... <laughs> okay, so they're the open generation. Now, um, one thing you and I were talking just before this about they're open to spiritual things. Mm-hmm. Yet there's a lot of doubt when it comes to Christianity. There's a lot of misunderstanding of what the Bible is or even how to engage with it. Yeah. Talk to us about, about some of that. Yeah, one in three Gen Z uh, and Alpha generation, they are... Which Gen Z, uh, that would be what age? Like our teenagers? Yeah, they're, they, Gen Z is like 1995 to 2012. Okay. So, so yes, teenagers, right? Um, but Gen Alpha is... 2013 to 20 right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all of our, all of our littles would be in that gen alpha. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they fall into some of this category there. There's a overlap of teenagers mm-hmm. in those two different generations that will, will discover how they function and operate a little better later. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but gen Z is the open generation and one in three of gen Z individuals, mm-hmm. um, they, they think like Jesus did raise from the dead. Okay. Christian, non-Christian, doesn't matter what they're mm-hmm. affiliated with. Um, so two-thirds don't believe in the resurrection. Correct. Yeah. But some of those two-thirds might even call themselves a Christian. Uh-huh. 
So that's where the open the openness comes to light. Like it's like, yeah, it could be. Yep. But I don't think it did. Well, but I call myself a Christian, and so there's there's just just real confusion yeah. right now. And and there was another stat. It was eight percent are biblically engaged. Yeah. Meaning they <laughs> they read the Bible, they open the Bible, um, they they go, okay, I want to learn from this. Yep. That, that's really a small percentage. Really low. When we go, okay, this is the guide that God's given us. So on, all of their facts, yeah. you know, quote unquote facts, are coming from not the Bible. Yeah. Right? From searches. Yes. From chat GBT or, or whatever. TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's YouTube. Uh, how much information is downloaded off of YouTube? Yeah. Well, just so you know, anybody can post on YouTube. Yeah. And any video can be popular. And yeah. Yeah, so it's not necessarily all great information. Mm -hmm. And and so that's where they're learning from. So 8%. Okay, so for a parent that's going, okay, I have I have younger kids. Yeah. Um, I don't want them to follow suit in the biblical illiteracy or whatever. But if I just hand them the Bible that my grandma gave me and say, here, read this, right. that's not going to help them. It won't necessarily engage them. Yeah. <laughs> so So how do you help engage kids with the Bible? in a way that they can receive it? There's there's a lot of different ways, but I would say one of the most effective ways is through relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, like we talked about, like uh, the number one goal for our student ministries is to get them plugged into a small group. Mm -hmm. That small group, yeah, they have fun, they talk life, but it's based in biblical truth, Yeah, right? And so they're going to dive in together and then they're going to talk about it and they're going to explore it and they're going to like say their opinion and they're going to hear from a, a leader that's helping to coach and guide them along. Um, so there was a day when, Mike, you and I grew up in churches that they were real big on information. Yes. If we can get all the information to these kids, then they'll be fine. If we can have them memorize all these key verses, and so yeah. there was these clubs, and I don't, I don't want to talk down about these clubs, but right. they were, they they served a great purpose when it came to the information piece of it. Yes. Uh, but we know, and and what research and and what life experience has shown is that information alone doesn't change lives. No. If that was the case, nobody would smoke because it says right on there, this, hey, this, will, will, ca you. this will cause cancer. <laughs> yeah. um, it's not an information issue. Um, but it's it's information plus application, Yeah. actually doing something with the information yeah. in the context of relationships. So yeah. information plus application plus relationship equals transformation. Yes. And, and so you can't just take any of those out of the equation and the equation still work. Right. It breaks down. Yep. So if you want to see your kids experience transformation, it's yes, information. That is important. Which and, is and the right information. That's right. Yeah. Which let let's talk about this for a second. So in Sun Valley Ministries for kids and for students, we actually have laid out a, a map of information. Yeah. That, that kids should know by the time they get to kindergarten, that kids should know by the time they get to third grade, that they should know by the time they get to sixth grade, by the time they're done with junior high, by the time they graduate. And we have different sections. We call this our, our scope and sequence yeah. for kids and students. And so when we're putting together lessons, when we're teaching, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we want to keep planting these seeds in these different stages so they have good, solid inf biblical information. Yep. There's a foundation there. Yeah. Um, and, and so talk about how that kind of shifts over time because... It is very much when they're younger. It is information. Yeah. Application, it's a little bit difficult, you yeah. know, because they're still learning to process. They're very concrete. Um, it's very much information. Here's the Bible story. Here's the lesson. Here's yeah. the verse to, to learn. Um, but then there's this shift that kind of happens as they as they get older. Talk to us about that shift. Well, like you said, it it, it is all three all the time. Mm -hmm. But in student ministries, we emphasize one of those a little more just based on where they're at. Yep. Stage so. of life development, all yep. of that. Yeah. So in junior high, we have a, a higher emphasis on relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they're they're learning to do that, and they're desiring that, and they have almost a mob mentality sometimes. Yep. And uh, I've heard it called the gang age because they yeah. you know they group together. And if you're ever like, oh man, I wish that junior hires weren't so clickish. You were clickish when you were in junior high. Yes. That is that is actually a <laughs> developmental thing. Now we can do things to help kids not feel alienated or like they're on the outside to help include them into the groups. But yeah. uh, they group together. Yeah, and absolutely. they learn through their groups. Yes, it's it's through conversations and it's through, which is why it's so important to have a good group of kids yeah. around your junior hire. It's the whole like if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump? Then the, <laughs> yeah, the, the answer of a junior hire is like probably. It yeah, sounds fun. Uh, we're all doing Everybody's it. Okay, doing it. yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. So we, we tend to like lean into that though, mm -hmm. because that's their learning style right now. And that's how they're processing things. Um, 
And so, yeah, junior high is going to have a higher emphasis. We're still having biblical truth, mm-hmm. right? We're still having some application and challenge that goes along with it. Yep. But maybe that's more like a group challenge yep. and, and how they're going to do it in context of relationships. Uh, and then in high school, again, we have all of those, but it's going to lean more into the applications because mm-hmm. they are ready to own and apply their faith. That's right. Right. We're, we're teaching them how to fish. We're yes. not just giving them fish. We're teaching yes. them how to fish and how to experience the, the beauty of relationship with God in a day-to-day life. And so we're given tools and steps and, hey, take this challenge. And mm-hmm. and then in that coach stage, just like we, we talked about in the, the last podcast, talking about, you know, as parents we coach, well, as as youth leaders and as a church, we're, we're doing the same thing with our high schoolers as yeah. we're, we're coaching them yep. and asking questions and, and helping them to think and yeah. learn. And on the younger side, right, like very much information, yep. information. This is truth. This is foundational yep. truth. Yeah. Now, now, preteen is a unique. So let's talk about preteen because <laughs> yes. this is a this is a unique age, and that's our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, where all of a sudden they go from concrete to now abstract. Yes, and now they're they're learning the power of choice, and wow. they're 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 starting to go, oh, I can actually. I can choose this or I can choose this. And yeah. so we we lean into application with preteens as well mm-hmm. uh, because they're starting to experiment a little bit with their faith and yep. go, is this really, is it, is this true? Is this real? And is this something that that I can experience in my life or is it just mom and dad's faith? You know, yeah. is this something that, and, and so we, we've designed it around that developmental stage. What else yeah. do we need to know about preteens? Because somebody's listening right now yes. and, and they're, they're, it is overwhelming when the kids enter into adolescence yes. and you're like, oh, I remember this a little bit from when I was there, but I do not remember how to parent it. Right. So parents, let me encourage you. If your preteen is beginning to distance themselves from you, they're like, please don't drop me off in front of school. Drop me off <laughs> yep. down the street. Yep. Uh, that's super normal. Mm-hmm. Like one of the biggest indicators uh, that your child is becoming a preteen is they want autonomy from their parents. Mm-hmm. They still want your protection and the safety that you bring and the food that you give them. They still want all that, <laughs> yep. right? They want the benefit of you, but they mm-hmm. want to start to separate and begin to explore. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. And that's actually really healthy for them to begin to learn how to function. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we talked about life change, transformation, all of that. Uh, talk about some other things that, that we do as a as a church specifically to help kids develop their faith throughout the, the years of from childhood up through adolescence. Yeah, just like the scope and sequence, like we have a plan in place. Mm-hmm. And so there is language that we will repeat over and over and over because words build worlds. Yep. Uh, there's different scripture that we will hit multiple times or we'll put it on our walls in our rooms or um, we will encourage them to memorize certain verses because uh, we want them, like we know that they're struggling with identity. And so we want a bunch of verses that just speak truth into who God says they are. Yeah, not not who the world says they are or maybe who they think they are. Right. Or the the words of somebody that was spoken to them that now they're taking it going, well, I guess that's just who I am. Yeah. Uh, Which, by the way, adults, your words in the life of kids and teenagers are so powerful. Yeah. Do not underestimate, especially mom and dad, the power your words play in the life of your child. All of us can think back on words that were said that were negative mm-hmm. and, and hopefully words that were said that were positive and how they transformed our, our lives as kids and as teenagers. And so, um, yeah, maybe their identity is wrapped up in, in something negative that was said. Totally. And so we get to go, hey, here's what God, the God who created the universe, who spoke everything into existence, who is the author of all things, yeah. whose word is the final say, here's what he says about you. Yep. And, and so let's replace those lies that the, the enemy wants us to believe, and let's replace those with truth. Absolutely. And so I would say, similarly to the track that we have or the plan that we have as mm-hmm. a ministry with, like, scope and sequence, and here's how we treat them at different stages of their, their development, mm-hmm. uh, and here's some of the goals for that. And then uh, we have these... La- this language that we use all the time, and here's some truth that we want to base everything off of. Mm-hmm. I think in the same way that we do that as a ministry, um, families can do that inside their nuclear family. Yeah. Right? Um, and so parents, I would encourage you, uh, just like you said about child dedication earlier, like mm-hmm. pick a life verse. Like mm-hmm. pick something that, that you can identify and see in your, your child that you want to speak truth into and just say, this is your life verse. Um, our girls have them. I know your, your kids have them. Um, I would say uh, 
figure out language that defines your family. Mm -hmm. So in our household, we say Brantons, and then we fill in the Mm -hmm. we fill in the gap with like four or five things. Your values for our family. Brantons always X Y Z. It's kind of like you're leader of an organization, and you're building culture for your team. Right. Yeah, and and now you're you're doing that in your home, which all of us are cultural architects in in the spaces that we live in, in our homes. And um, you mentioned it: the words that we speak, words build worlds. And so, think through what. What are the phrases you want to repeat on a regular basis? Yeah. What are the things you really want to impress? Um, and the Bible uses that word impress, meaning it's like soft clay that that we can our our words, our what we model, all of that we are impressing into our kids. And eventually, mm-hmm. there comes a point where we kind of you know things harden a little bit, like concrete or whatever, or that clay. And yeah. as we get older, but as much as we can, we want to impress these things on our kids, uh, the truth of who God is, who God created them to be, the truth of who they are. And the reality is that they are little, beautiful, wonderful sinners that need a savior. <laughs> uh, we want to impress that truth on our kids and uh, and help them really adopt that into their lives. Okay. Yeah. So stages of parenting, uh, different things you can do in the home. What are some practical things that parents can do to help along the different stages. So um, I'm going to throw out one. We mentioned the Bible and that only 8% are biblically engaged. Mm -hmm. Uh, To help our kids with that, younger kids, there's like a rhyme Bible that we had where we, it's basically like, you know, Mother Goose, whatever. And we would, it's these rhymes, but it's these truths and these Bible stories and the Jesus storybook. um, I think it's called the Jesus storybook. Yeah. Yeah, Which is, for that also for that younger age. And then when our kids became preteens, we got them the Action Bible. Yes. Which is made by this guy who did like DC Comics. Mm-hmm. And so it's the stories of the Bible, but it's in comic book form. Yeah. And it's so good. Like as an adult, I'm yes. like, I remember things because I'm a visual <laughs> learner. That's why whenever I teach, I use some kind of visual something. And I'll remember stories, not because I read it in my, you know, right. whatever Bible, because I read it in my kid's action Bible, yes. and I can still picture the scene in my I'm in my walking mind. through those yeah. images right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a great way to, to get, especially adolescent boys, if yeah. you want them engaged, like, that is a great tool. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, as they get older, just kind of keep them engaged and mm-hmm. get them the app on their phone. And there's a Bible app that has all the different translations and find a translation that they can understand. Yeah. Um, so that might be New Living Translation or whatever. If you grew up... And you're like, nope, I'm King James only. Like, right. I'm sorry, your kid does not understand the King's English. In what in what other context do you get something handed to you that lasts your whole life mm-hmm. as a as a as a three year old, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. You need to have the Bible grow with your kid. Yeah, yeah, and have those different expressions. And I would say even as a teenager, there's another Bible called the Jesus Center Bible, uh-huh. where in the Old Testament there are blue words yep. that point to Jesus. Yeah, uh, Jesus is coming. Yeah, uh, and then in the New Testament, just like every Bible, there's red words of Jesus. Yeah. So it's just, it's it's bringing to light Jesus. In how this is a foreshadowing that was fulfilled in Jesus. How, why why does this story in Genesis, what does that have to do? Well, it, it's laying a foundation for what Jesus is going to accomplish. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's a that's a great resource. What are, what are some other practical things parents can do to help impart faith? Because again, parents are going, I need a plan. Like, yeah. what, what is that plan? Um, something my wife and I have done is... Uh, these milestones uh-huh. like we 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 from a young age um set up these certain ages yep. so at this age we will do this at this age we'll do this um one thing is at 10 years old mm-hmm. the girls and i when they turn 10 will go on a train trip okay uh, i didn't know that was still a thing it's a thing yeah it's, it's actually a little sketchy but it's still a thing <laughs> okay um yeah uh so you take a train somewhere we take a train um and then we who decides st- um the they have options. The girls okay. have options. Okay. Only a couple because trains take a while. Yeah, like, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they I want to go to Maine. No, no, yeah. no, no. Okay. <laughs> um, so typically we're headed over to California, mm-hmm. uh, and then we'll stay a few a few days. But during that trip, my wife and I create these five envelopes, and it's these these five categories and and topics that we want to have a specific memory attached to this conversation, mm-hmm. um, and. It's it's cheerleading. It's encouragement. Mm-hmm. It is foreshadowing, like what's to come, and and giving them advice on uh, what we see in their future. Uh, it is giving them truth for the right now. Like like all of these different ideas and topics, we're setting up this. Hey, at ten, 
you have that experience with dad. Mm -hmm. Um, At 16, you're going to have a different experience with mom, but we're super intentional on what we're giving them during the experience. Mm -hmm. I think it's very similar to like stacking stones or finding these remembrance. Yeah. uh, So in the the Bible, God would do a miracle. There would be this incredible moment. And, and they would stack stones in remembrance so that when kids walked by, they'd go, hey, yeah. Dad, why are all these stones stacked up by this Jordan yep. River? Yep. And then Dad could say, oh, let me tell you the story of what God did. Yeah. So currently, two of my daughters have done the trip with me, mm-hmm. and one is about to do my trip with me. Mm-hmm. But every time, just as a family, we go on vacation or we head over to California, we'll pass by certain locations, and those two girls will be like, Dad, remember when we did this? You yeah. Know, and we talked about this. And, and so it's just seared into their memory. Yep. Um, and so there's there's milestones that you can set So those up. are some big things that you have mapped out. Okay, we got 18 years, yeah. roughly, with these kids. Yeah. And so you've picked some key milestones. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, what are some little things um so language we use in our house Mm -hmm. uh so like i said branton's like one of them is branton's listen and obey Mm -hmm. um and so we have this mantra we're like hey um anytime our girls would need to obey something we would say that it needed to be right away all the way and with a happy heart Mm-hmm. And as cheesy as that sounds, we <laughs> yep. would we would make it into a song like right away, all the way, with a happy heart. We would say it like at different ages, we would yep. say it differently to them. But they know that the sentence following that is the why. So you ha- it's time to obey. You need to do it right away, all the way, and with a happy heart to completely obey. Because someday when God asks you to do something... I need you to, to, to try to do that right away, all the way, and with a happy heart. Mm-hmm. So it's not just like you have to obey me because I want you to do something yeah. in the moment. It is it is hopefully instilling into them like, no, God's going to ask me to be obedient in the future. And to, what that looks like is right away, all the way, and with a happy heart. Mm-hmm. One of the one of the things we can do as parents, and and we've used this phrase before, more is caught than taught, mm-hmm. is, is we can be growing in our faith. Mm-hmm. And we can even be, you know, processing of like, hey, here's something that God's teaching me. Here's something that I'm learning right now. Hey, I read this today in my Bible. Um, and, and if we want our kids to engage with the Bible, then we should engage with the Bible and go, yeah. here's something that I'm learning. Or, hey, we talked about this in church, and this is something that, that God's speaking to me. And have have conversations about our faith journey with our kids. Yep. Uh, I grew up in a home where we went to church, but I, I never really heard about the faith journey of my parents. Like, yeah. what is actually what is God doing in your life? Like, mm-hmm. that that's good information for a kid to hear from. From a parent, um, modeling things like prayer, like praying yeah. on a regular basis, yeah. um, and not just praying the exact same prayer repeated, but what's actually on your heart. And when kids are wrestling with something, go, let's talk to God about it, yeah, and and make that part of the pattern. We'll do sometimes we'll mix it in and do these litanies at meals, mm-hmm. and my wife bought a book of litanies to read. Litanies are just these written out prayers and for different specific occasions, and uh, she was looking for one that wouldn't go over our girl's head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's very creative and brilliant, and she couldn't find it, so she wrote one. Uh-huh. Uh, so she wrote a book, a kid's book, on teaching our kids how to pray. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, if, if even if it's not out there, like you can create it, you can establish it in your home and figure out these little ways of, of making a huge impact. So we taught our kids tacos. Yes. Uh, which is Thanksgiving. <laughs> Adoration, confession, others, self. Those are five different types of prayers. Yeah. You can teach your kids how to pray. And who doesn't love tacos? Who doesn't love tacos? It's taco time. So we <laughs> so we took a little bag and put scrabble pieces in there with the letters T A C O S and then some blank ones. And so for a season, the kids would draw out their scrabble tile and they would pray whatever that type yeah. of prayer was. And if it was a blank one, they got to choose whatever they wanted. Nice. And uh, and so we did that. And then just again, modeling teaching, but also making it fun. Like yeah. there's different ways that, that we can approach God and, and engage with God. Mm-hmm. Anything else, Mike, I know we're, we're running out of time here, but anything else yeah. that you have that you would recommend as parents are coming up with a plan for how to lead their kids? I, I would say if you don't have some phrases as families, like like Branton's do or whatever mm-hmm. your last name is, we do this. I would think of two or three just to start and yeah. say, and say them over and over and over and over. Uh, so repetition is huge. Um, tracking out like a long term plan is great uh, for some bigger things, and then finding the one or two small things that you can work into your routine on uh, daily or weekly basis would be yeah. really good. Yeah, and come to church. 
Yeah. We'll walk alongside you and, this and journey. And surround yourself with community that That's will right. support that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a grandparent, um, this is true for you too. You you have a responsibility. You've experienced what God has done in your life uh, to stack those stones and for the kid to go, hey, grandpa, hey, grandma, tell me about this, or uh, to impart that that truth, that wisdom, that love, and that light of God's grace into the life of your grandkids. Mm. And so I would say that's, that's true for aunts, uncles, all of us. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well... That's all the time we have for the podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. If this is helpful or you know anybody that would benefit, you can share this, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you would like this video, leave us a comment, and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.